Welcome to the channel and today we are going to show you how to do a prism cover test. So we've got this prism over here and it's got two sides. One is the base and one is the apex. We need to know which side we need to put in for exo or esotropia. And we're going to show you how to do a prism cover test. And this is very important, especially for different types of uh, tropias. So let's begin. So now we're going to show you first how to do a cover test on this thing. You look straight towards that thing. And you can see the eye is turning uh, inwards and this is an exotropia and this seems to be a large angle exotropia and once you do the uncover test you can see the eye immediately takes up fixation. I'll do it again and here you can see it takes up pretty quickly and it takes goes back. So this is a left sided dominant exotropia. So it does not show a very freely alternating exotropia. So now let's go on to do a prism cover test the first thing we want to do is we want to put the prism cover according to the base so this is an exotropia so we need to put a base in prism for exotropia and we can put the base on any side but i'll do it on the fixating eye so we know that it's a large angle exotropia either you can start off from a very narrow area a small smaller prism and then go on to the larger one so so I'll just increase it more because it seems like a very large exotropia. Uh, and what we want to see is the movement of the eye. So if you can see this, the movement of the eye on this side. And once I move this, you can see the eye is not moving on that side quite a lot. And here we can see the amount of uh, exotropia which is coming out is about... Uh, 18 prism diopter on this side so let's take it more and see does it does, is there any change on the type of squint it's still and now you can see it goes on to a level it still remains stable at this time so this is so we want to take it to a place of reversal where it starts to rather than going it turns into an esotropia now you can see it's turning into a slight bit of esotropia now when you Instead of the eye coming from out to inward, it is coming going from in to out. So this is goes. So this is the maximum 45 prism diopter. So you can look do dekna. So it tends to hold at this level. And let's uh, do it for near now. Apne iski dekna. We have a, at the half an arm's length. So we have a fixating target. Look at the numbers over here at the pencil tip. And we're going to do the same thing. A cover test and see. The eye movement here, he's trying to, he holds it and this is a freely alternating exotropia for near for him in this instance. And now I'm going to put that uh, prism bar over here and see the movement. So you can see you can either do it in a deviating eye or a non-deviating eye. And you need to hold it and you need to move. So if you're doing it, if you want to do it, prism cover test to track for a Fourier as well. So you need to do slightly quickly. You can see here over here the movement is not being neutralized at 45 degrees as well. If that happens then we need to add a prism over here. So next what we do is uh, we are going to put uh, ask the patient to put an extra prism over there. So that's a 45 prism diopter extra. So we need to do on both sides now. So we add a prism on the other side as well. We ask, ask the patient to hold the prism up and we try to neutralize at this time. So this is being neutralized at this level. So now you can see, we keep going. Let me go totally forward against this. And you can see the, uh, the movement reverses on this area. So we're getting a neutralization at this level. At, uh, so you need to ask the patient to hold it. So we're having a 45 plus 20 prism diopter which is for near in this patient over here. So now we want to uh, ask him to uh, put his glasses on and we're going to do the same test with glasses on to see if the exotropia remains the same or not. Uh, you have to look forward and do the cover test again. You can see there's a large angle exotropia and you can see on Hirschberg that the light is actually falling on the limbus, nearly on the limbus. And uh, let's do so most important, when you're holding this uh, prism bar, you need to hold it from here 
students tend to hold, put the thumbprint right on the prism. That smudges the prism, which is not recommended because otherwise when you're doing it, it will all get blurred for the patient, but the patient needs to see through the prism. So I'm instead of using it from this level, if you know it's a large angle prism, you can start off straight away with a, with a large prism so that you don't waste that much of time. And here you can see it's still giving that movement from out to inward. So that means the exotropia is still there. And similarly, when you keep going, it's still. So I put it on 45. You have to distance the distance. So there's a bit of fogging of uh, the glasses of the patient because of the mask we're using. But here you can see sometimes there's a movement. So it's neutralizing at this level. And we do it again with, uh, if you hold this, and the finger a So you put the prism over here and then check again using the prism cover test. So this is the speed which you want to go through. So you can see that there's, so you can hold this uh, with for near. And now we want to move this. So you can see for near, his exotropia tends to be more compared for his distance. So we need to add a brace in. So you know, when I'm going to the left side, I'm holding this from the bottom rather than, and from I'm going from this side, I'm holding on the top. So that gives me an area so I don't cross my hands while I'm doing this uh, prism cover test. So look straight ahead. Look at this pen. You can see, so it's more or less the same 45 plus. Now you can see actually the reversal of... Uh, not the reversal and still not over there. So if there's a difficulty holding on this side, you can also hold it from the other side. So you can see the eyeball comes in. Sometime when it gets too big, uh, and it looks straight ahead. So you ask the patient to, so you can see just by slight movement of what it is. So you're getting the same over here and it is neutralizing at a higher level over here if it go beyond. This is now reverse, so you tend to get that vibration movement, eyeball going from inside to the outside. So in this patient, we found out uh, on conclusion that the patient had uh, an exotropia, which was more for near compared to for distance. So this is a patient having a convergence insufficiency uh, exotropia. And uh, the patient was mostly dominant on the left side. So the prism cover test confirmed with the amount of squint and then the amount of squint we found was about 45 prism diopter for distance and it was 45 plus 20 prism diopter for near. So we need to plan surgery for this and for that uh, we're going to, uh, because it goes on to the maximum limit so we'll probably uh, decide you have got different tables or nomograms on which you can decide on this and uh, looking at the amount of exotropia would probably go for a maximum surgery which uh, uh, in my hands I would do a six millimeter resection of the medial rectus and an eight millimeter recession of the lateral rectus but this patient is an older patient about 25 years old so we want to aim with an adjustable suture surgery so that post-op diplopia is most important in patients at this age because he's got 6-6 six, six vision in both eyes with glasses. So that is the most important. So I'll try to do uh, adjustable suture surgery on the lateral rectus. And uh, if there's any diplopia post-op, we'll correct it post-op uh, within 4 to 6 hours after surgery or next day after surgery to get the optimal results. So thank you very much for watching.